Hello, welcome to the Worldwide Culinary Apprentice Online Pastry School. My name is Jeff Key Rodriguez, and today we are going to be cooking sugar. I'm going to use isomol first and then I will explain how to do it with sugar. Isomol is the sugar substitute that is widely used in professional um, p competitions. So uh, it's uh, really resistant to humidity. It's not 100% resistant to humidity but it lets you work in very uh, rainy days. Something that you don't really want to do when you're working with sugar. Humidity is an enemy of sugar show pieces. So for isomalt, you just take your isomalt, you can buy it online, very easily accessible, and it's like this, right, white, it's like little pebbles. You put it in your pot. If it's a small amount like this, you just need to put it on your stove and stir it once in a while until it melts, and it's completely clear. There are no pieces of isomalt, and if you want to uh, be really sure you just put a thermometer and at least it needs to be at 320 degrees Fahrenheit or 158 Celsius and if you're using a lot of isomol it will be easier if you put a little water in the uh, isomol so use 10 percent water to the weight of your isomol and then stir it once in a while so you everything is melting evenly and you cook it to 320 degrees Fahrenheit, at least. You can go a little higher. It depends on what kind of um, clarity you want in your sugar. If you want to make really clear, just like glass windows, usually you cook it a little higher and then you let it cool down. But today we are going to use isomalt to do some poor sugar. And I will show you when you're doing show pieces, you know, you can buy these silicone molds online. You can go to the Chicago School of Molds.com and they have all kinds of silicone molds. Um, and these last a lifetime. They are a little expensive, but they will last forever and then you can do so many things with them. As you can see, I have some already poured here, but I will show you exactly how to pour this. So I have my isomol that was cooked to 320 degrees and then I put a drop of water color. You don't want to use uh, fat oil or uh, base color. It needs to be water soluble. And I put a little blue just because I want to make it blue. And uh, very carefully just pour it and you try to get to the edge. You don't want it too thin because it will break when you try to pull it out of the mold. So you see, I just pour it here. Uh, one uh, important trick about the isomol, once you cook it to 320, it's going to be really liquid and boiling. Take it out of the stove, let it rest for 10 minutes so it cools down to at least 270. That way, when you pour it, you can get a clear, no bubble sugar. If you put it when, when it's right at 320, it's going to start bubbling and you don't get a really clear uh, result. So if you, you can do this with sugar too. You can go to uh, the website and look for the recipe for ribbon pulling and that's the same recipe and, um, and it works fine. It's just something that is not going to be resistant to humidity. So the same recipe I'm going to show you now. I put another color in this one, red. And the same thing, you can just take a little of this. You see it's really thick because and that way will be really clear. So I'm going to put a little in, maybe in this one. Do 
you see on all the bubbles disappear because it's it cooled down a little another thing you can do with this recipe is when you want to do like wings or leaves the same place you can buy these molds right these are leaves but they're all kind of uh, all varieties of leaves and these are wings there are two ways of making the wings some people take um, a small container put some of the sugar and they pour it really carefully over the wing it's really difficult to do that because you end up uh, getting some of the sugar dripping out of the little edges and then it's very difficult to get out the best way is when your sugar is ready very carefully because this is really hot you're going to dip this only on this side and you try to shake it while you're doing that so you don't get any and it gives you time to look and see if you need to go back so I am being careful so the sugar doesn't come above the mold and you let it drip and then you can put it on your surface to cool down later you can clean this part if you have a couple of spaces that need a little sugar you can take a knife and before the sugar gets too cold and very carefully you can um, fill this up while the sugar is hot so it adheres to this one here and then before it sets you can with a knife clean this so it's easier to later get it out of the mold okay so this is good we're gonna wait for this to set and before it sets completely you can bend it and let it set on a uh, whimsical shape or you can let it set completely and then later under a heat lamp or maybe with a microwave like two or three seconds just soften enough so you can bend your wing any way you want so this is still a little soft but I can bend it I can remove it from here and I can bend it any way I want but then the thing is that if you want to uh, this to cool at this stage you have to wait right there or put it on a, on a bowl that is the same shape because if I leave it on the table like this eventually it will go flat and uh, but look how pretty it is on the curve very pretty on the mold I had already some pieces that were ready so really carefully you just try to separate this I see they come they hard no, just because they're hard, don't think they are really strong. They, they're really fragile, so you have to be really careful when you handle them. These are still a little soft. But if you have it on a cold table, it will cool a lot faster. And that's how you make the wings and the cast your next time.